Hey everybody, Joe Workman here. And in this video, we're going to be looking over all of the basics of SEO meta tags. So we're going to be looking at how to implement all the various meta tags inside SEO helper and how to get started with SEO helper. So before we dive into rapid Ever, there's a couple things I want to hash out. Um, so SEO helper utilizes uh, PHP 7. Um, so a lot of our products over the years have supported PHP 5.6. Last year, um, even the PHP foundation themselves deprecated. It is gone. PHP 5.6 is no longer supported. So make sure that if you are going to be using SEO helper, that your server, your web server is running PHP 7.2. Now, next up, you need to be running at least Mac OS 10.13 or above. That's high Sierra and above uh, in order to preview SEO helper inside rapid weaver. The reason for this is that uh, 10.13 is the first version that Mac OS shipped PHP seven. Prior to that, it still used the unsupported version of PHP 5.6. Um, so make sure that you're running 10.13 or high Sierra and above in order to use SEO helper on your local Mac. Now, before we dive into SEO helper, there's a few things that we need to make sure that we turn off and clean up inside of the wrap weaver project so that SEO helper runs smoothly. And before that I do that, I want to show you two features that SEO helper has. Okay. So if I just preview this page, there's a couple checkers that SEO helper has in the background to help us out. First, we'll see that, uh, it supports a duplicate meta tag checker. So that normally means, uh, that you have some duplicate meta tags, probably that you have rapid weaver meta tags turned off we're going to show you how to turn those off um, in a minute but next up you'll know that it also has a duplicate uh, page finder um, built into the stacks now this only shows inside rapid weaver but it tells you whether or not you have both html and php versions of a particular web page on your server so as you see here um, i have both an html and a php version of this particular file on the server now, SEO Helper uses PHP. Therefore, you're going to want to make sure that you have the PHP version of the page on the server. If you have an HTML version, you're going to have to delete it. Okay. Or else you will never see any of the benefits from SEO Helper because your web server is going to be serving the HTML file because those always take precedence. Now, easily right inside this modal, there's a button here that you can actually use to delete the HTML file right here from inside rapid weaver now if you want you can also use your favorite F ftp app and then go to the server and delete the file manually else what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go ahead and delete that html file and um it cleans it up for us if i refresh this preview we'll see that that duplicate page is gone it no longer alerts me about that so let's go ahead and fix the duplicate meta tags found what do we need to do to resolve that one next up uh let's go to general and inside general you're going to want to turn off generate social tags what this does is it stops Rapiver from generating social media tags because we're now going to be doing those with SEO helper. Now, next up, if you have any meta tags inside this site wide code area, um, you may want to clean those up if they're tags that SEO helper is going to take care of for us. Um, by default, this is blank. So uh, it may be blank for you as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the page inspector for our page and go to the meta tags uh, tab over here in the page inspector. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to turn off uh, robot meta tags. And if you have, if since we've already turned it off in the general settings, um, this is already grayed out. But um, if this is there, make sure you uncheck that. And also, again, make sure you uncheck it over here in the general preferences uh, area in the project. But now we're good to go. Uh, make sure if you have any descriptions, delete that because all of this data here is now going to be managed by SEO helper. Um, so if we preview the page now, uh, we do see that the duplicate meta tag checker is gone. Yay. Now, if you are still seeing a duplicate meta tag checker and you're certain that you've turned everything off here, let's go ahead. I'm going to enable robots meta tag here. Um, so we have this duplicate met, um, meta tags found, but we want to know what that actually is. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click in preview and say inspect element. Um, we're going to go over to our console and we'll see that we're, there's some warnings and here it says duplicate meta tag found for robots, right? So now we know that we have some robots meta tag data 
um, that's duplicate on the page. So again, all of this duplicate page checker or meta tag checker only happens inside Wrapweaver. So you, you don't need to worry about um, publishing the page and seeing these little um, modals inside uh, your published projects. Okay, now for the fun and exciting stuff, we're gonna dive into SEO meta tags, okay? Now, when you first add SEO meta tags to the page, uh, you will see that it adds in by default the SEO basics. Now, these are all the basic meta tags that you're going to need for a majority of your web pages. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to, uh, you know, you have your site title. Um, again, this isn't site title. This is actually the page title. Okay, so you're going to want your page title here. Um, you need to have a full image URL. Okay, so you're going to need to probably either warehouse an image. Uh, probably an easy way to do that is if, if you use Rapweaver's resources API, right? Uh, you can you can add an image to your resources. You can right click and say copy URL, right? Uh, and then when you copy that URL, you could simply paste that directly into the image URL area here. That's probably the easiest way to do that. If you know how to warehouse images and things of that nature, go ahead and use your favorite method. But that is a really simple way to get started. Add an image uh, to the resources. Right click, copy URL, paste it straight in there. Uh, next up, you're going to want to have description. Okay, now what you'll notice is the description here um, is used for both the page description as well as the social OG open graph descriptions that is used to share across social media and whatnot. Okay, um, now we have an auto detect page URL. This basically, um, it, it talks to Rapweaver and figures out the actual published URL. Um, if you wanna override that, you can simply type in a manual URL if you want as well. But um, if it's just a normal Rapweaver page, um, not like something that uses Total CMS blog or some other, um, you know, fancy uh, stacks that could potentially change URLs, um, the auto detect URL is going to be perfect. Next up is the index site and follow links. This is robot stuff, right? So do we want search engines to index the site and do we want them to follow links on this page? Okay. And next up um, is down here in how do we want to manage this content? You can have user defined. Or if you're a Total CMS user, you can actually turn on Total CMS support. And what you would do here is you would actually put in the CMS IDs that you want this to resolve, right? So here I would do, um, you know, page title, which is my CMS ID. Here I would do um, share image. Again, this is the, um, the, you would put in just the CMS IDs in here. For image URLs, this is gonna be the CMS ID of an actual image drop zone. So you can drag and drop an image and that's gonna be the CMS ID of the actual image. The rest of these are gonna be um, actual just text areas, okay? Um, now for right now, uh, you can't manage the robots data with total CMS, it's just the textual fields. So um, these check boxes, now obviously you can do auto detect URL and put in a, um, an, a CMS ID in here, but I think auto detect URL is probably gonna work for you uh, in most use cases. Um, but again, inside these areas, you're just gonna put in um, the um, CMS IDs and then total CMS that's on the page will actually resolve those to be the actual data that you need. Okay, so let's say that the basics isn't enough for you, right? You need you want more control over this. Maybe you want some additional attributes. Um, now, what you could do is you could start with the basics and then you can add things. Let, let's say you want to have geolocation. So you can you can mix SEO basics plus geolocation totally possible. But let's say you wanted more specific open graph. There's additional open graph tags that not everyone really needs to use. Um, there's some Twitter stuff, right? There's, uh, if you really wanted more control, uh, basically what you can do is you're going to get rid of SEO basics. Okay. And then basically you're going to add a lot of that stuff individually. So we can add our canonical URLs. We can add page description. We can add robots. And basically we can build our own custom SEO tags uh, for this particular page. Okay, so you, as you see, you can add in open graph. And then when we go in open graph, there's a bunch of optional fields here. Okay, now if you hover over these fields um, inside the settings, you'll get some detailed descriptions about what those are and things of that nature, right? So uh, a lot of these are optional fields. So if you want a lot of these, you're going to want to make sure that you add in the open graph tag, get rid of the basics one, and then just start adding and building your own custom uh, page. 
Now, obviously from here, you're gonna wanna look at structured data too. It's another uh, popular one. We're gonna have a video specifically on structured data. I'm not gonna review it here, um, but yes. Now we're gonna talk about maybe a little bit about what do all of these tags give you? When do you wanna use them? And when may you not wanna use them? So what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna go down this list and talk about the various meta tags and when you might want to use them. So canonical URL, what is a canonical URL? To illustrate that, we're gonna be looking at the Weaver Space site. And hopefully you recognize this page. This is Weaver Space and this is the stacks page. And if you've never noticed inside on this page, we have different ways you can display layouts, right? Via these toggles. Now, if you notice what this does is um, it adds this, this question mark layout equals list to the URL. Now, Google is gonna see this as a different URL. It's gonna see Weaver space slash stacks as different from Weaver space slash stacks question mark layout equals list. But I want Google to know that those two pages are exactly the same. They shouldn't index them and consider them two different web pages, right? So this particular page actually has three possible URLs. If I go ahead and click explicitly quick click on this grid, you'll see that we have um, up at the URL bar, question mark layout equals grid. So to illustrate this, these are the three different URLs that are possible on this particular page, right? And I wanna make sure that Google only references this URL. So no matter what parameters are added to the end of this URL, I wanna make sure that Google knows that no matter if you go to this URL or this URL, the real URL to this page is this first one here. So inside my Wrapweaver project for canonical URL on that page, I'm gonna put in this URL. That way Google knows that this is the exact URL to this page no matter how what other variations of the URL it sees. Other places that canonical URLs are gonna be good for is if you're using pretty URLs inside Total CMS and other solutions like that, okay? Next up, let's look at page description. Um, this is pretty apparent. This is the page description. This is what shows up as the small little paragraph under inside Google. Um, you definitely want this tag. Um, there is no, this is, I would say this is a required tag. Next is robots. Um, while you don't need to have this, um, I recommend you have it so that you have control whether or not um, explicitly going to index this page or not. Now by default, if Google or any search engine doesn't see these tags on your page, it's going to index it. So if you just want Google to index everything, you don't necessarily need to have it, right? Uh, but you wanna make sure that you have this, especially if you don't want pages to be indexed because then you just uncheck this and it will change it to be no index so that Google and other search engines will never index this page. Next up is geolocation. Now, if you're a local business, this is gonna be really important. You're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have your geolocation set. And this is gonna be important if you wanna have people do local search because Google is going to use this tag um, to know that this particular website is within this particular local region so I'm gonna serve up if someone searches for photographers in the area or architects in the area or whatever your business is, whatever your local business is, you want that local search. And this is a very important one. Now for local, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you also have local business structured data. Uh, we'll review this later on when we talk about structured data in a separate video, but um, just wanna add for local business, make sure that you add structured data for that as well. So I'm sure you've seen whenever you share a URL on social media, whether it's Twitter or Facebook or Slack or the Weaver Space community, right? You get these nice previews, right? So here I added the URL. This is a good little social media testing tool. I've reviewed this and a lot of other tools similar to it um, in a live stream that I did. So check out our YouTube channel for that live stream on how to um, use SEO Helper for social media, okay? Uh, but this is a great tool to test how things are gonna look. So when someone shares my SEO Helper product page on Facebook, this is what they see. And all of this is accomplished through using the SEO Helper meta tags, okay? And here we see, this is what it looks like on Twitter. Here's what it looks like on Slack. And here's what it looks like on LinkedIn. And again, all that is accomplished through the Facebook open graph tags. Uh, now there are Twitter specific ones as well. So. Mostly you're gonna use a Twitter summary card, 
Okay. There are some others for app. So if you have an app, this is an app specific one that has like URLs to iPhone app stores and Google play stores and stuff like that. Right? So if you are an app developer, you definitely want to have this app card in there. Um, and next up is you're going to want to make sure if you have a, there's a player card as well. If you have, uh, you know, a video a particular video on the page and you want to make sure that, you know, those nice little iframes play on Twitter, uh, Twitter has some specific stuff for there. Now inside the Facebook open graph tags, we do have some optional stuff here. We have uh, video and audio URLs. So if you do want to have some specific media um, about particular page, you can go ahead and add that data and that will be used on Facebook. Now here you can also define your Facebook username as well as your app ID. Um, your app ID is if you want to look at specific analytics inside Facebook's developer tools, you can kind of see how many people are sharing your link across, um, you know, Facebook and whatnot. Uh, those really aren't required um, inside the Facebook debugger tool. Um, it's going to tell you it's required, but it really isn't. Okay. Um, again, check out that live stream that I did on social media tags. Um, I really go into all this in much more detail and greater depth. Now with open graph, you can also define whether or not this is a website, whether it's a product, whether it's a book, whether it's an article. Um, so this kind of, uh, gives Facebook and other social media an idea about what type of media is this. Okay. Most of the time it's probably going to be a website, but if you have, if you, if you have a product based site and you're selling books or, um, you know, maybe it's a social profile, maybe it's your about page, something like that, you can definitely tweak this data so that Facebook knows what type of page this is getting shared as. And just like in canonical URLs, you can auto detect the URL or you can explicitly define one as well. Now, if we go all the way to the bottom of SEO meta tags, there's a few kind of helper ones. So I've added one here for disable caching. Um, there are no settings in this particular stack, but it's just a useful one. It adds some meta tags in there that will tell the browser do not cache anything on this page. And um, so, yeah, if you want, this could be useful for admin pages or things that you want to make sure that the data is always brought down from the server and never cached by the browser. I definitely recommend that you on your live production sites, though, that you don't add this for your, your active live web pages because browser caching really does help speed up the performance of your websites. And lastly, we have custom meta tags. Now inside custom meta tags, we can nicely just type in whatever custom HTML meta tags we want directly in there. And uh, when you're done, you just click close. Um, if there are meta tags that you think you would like to be added officially to SEO meta tags, let me know. I'm always open to ideas, um, but I think we've covered a vast majority of the meta tags. And again, make sure you check out the other videos that we have specifically on structured data. So there we have it, guys. That is the basics of the SEO meta tags. I didn't go through every single setting in detail, but hopefully you got a good overview of all of the meta tags, what they're used for, how to get started. Again, start with the SEO basics. And if you feel you need more than that, then you can add on to that or replace it and kind of build your own meta tags with the options available from that drop down menu, right? Um, if you have questions about the various settings, hover over the little settings titles. You'll get a nice description of what that particular setting is. Um, and there should be really detailed settings um, and descriptions of those for you. So hopefully that helps you out. Hope you're enjoying SEO Helper. Hope it really helps you um, improve your SEO of your websites and your social reach, improving the richness of how things are shared on social media. And uh, I'm really excited. I, I love all the feedback I've been getting. People have really been loving SEO Helper and I'm glad it's been making an impact. So. Make sure you check out the other videos that we have on SEO Helper to get the most out of the structured data and site maps and 404 pages and all the other stuff. So take care, have a wonderful day, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.